Go with me to the book of Luke, the second chapter. Y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Come on now. I came to have church. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. I came to be with God's people and serve our master. Amen. 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 Luke, the second chapter. Amen. I'm going to start at verse 10, if you don't mind. Amen. Brother Victor, I pray you have the New King James Version. If you don't, the King James will pass quite sufficiently. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Deacon Gamble, for your kind words. Amen. In the back. They need it. They need it. Amen. How many of y'all ever felt like the world was on your shoulders? Good morning. All right. I mean, we got to be real. We're about to go into this text, but yes. during this season, depression is real. Amen. During this season, heartache and loneliness yes. Yes. seems like it gets magnified. Mm -hmm. yes. And it seems like that if we're not very, very careful, mm -hmm. we'll forget that in this season that we are to be reminded that everything was taken care of. That everything that's trying to trouble us or beat us down has been conquered because of the season yes. we're in. Can y'all say amen? amen? If I don't even preach, just telling you that was enough. Right. Amen. But go with me, like I said, to the book of Luke around the 10th verse, the second chapter, the 10th verse. Amen. And the word of God reads, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Mm -hmm. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And the Bible goes on to say, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth goodwill toward men. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and I would like to take, take this time to speak to you just for the text for a little while. From the text, he's already done more than enough. All right. Amen. 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 He's already done more than enough. Yes. If I had a subtext to apply, it'll be, we can't let the angels beat our praise. Right. We can't let the angels beat our praise. But Deacon Gamble, I didn't know you was wrong-handed. Amen. We thank God for it today. Amen. 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 You over there writing with the wrong hand. Amen. Amen. Come on, Lord. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now for this moment in time. God, we thank you right now that the rain couldn't hold us back. God, we thank you right now that the wind, though it may be boisterous, it couldn't push us down. God, we thank you right now that we pushed our way through today because we knew that if we made it to Ebenezer, that if we knew if that we pulled up at 105 Dinkin Street, Manning, South Carolina, that God, you would already be there with blessings waiting on us. God, we thank you right now that you're speaking fresh in this house. God, we thank you right now that we can feel your breath once again upon us. God, we can tell you right now that we thank you that your breath is the wind beneath our wings. We say, God, that we thank you right now that you're going to do something in this house today. You're going to do something in our hearts today that will shake the foundations. That will let the enemy know that he'll have to loose your children. God, you're about to say and do something in this house today that will make us realize that no matter what Walmart and Target have on the shelf, we've got the greatest gift we could ever receive. God, we thank you right now that money couldn't purchase our praise. God, we thank you right now that cars couldn't drive us away. But God, we thank you right now that what we have in our hearts came from heaven. And we thank you that this joy we have, the world didn't give it to us. 
and the world can't take it away. This peace we have, the world couldn't give it to us, and the world can't take it away. Now, God, we ask that you bless those in this rainy day that are on their way. Give them traveling mercies that they may arrive safe and sound, but let them know that they need to be praising you in advance before they even show up. Let them know right now, God, that you're the same God that was with them in their living room. As long as they realize that, the travels will be safe and joyous. Bless us, this waiting congregation right now. Oh, my God. That sits in need of a word right now. Speak, almighty king. For thy servants hear of thee. God, speak a word right now that will break shackles. That will break fetters. Speak a word right now, God, that will let the cancer payment know that healing is on the way. Speak a word right now, God, that will let somebody know that arthritis will not stop you from praising God today. Speak a word right now, God, that when we leave here, the world will know that we've been with you and everything is all right. For it's in the name of Jesus, we do pray and welcome your Holy Spirit in this house, but more importantly, in our hearts. May the church say amen. 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 Well, I feel him in this house already. I feel him in this house already. I mess around and got into a conversation, preacher, with my son. And my son, knowing that I am a history nerd and I study history, I majored in it in undergrad, and he was asking me stuff about we had watched this movie and he was asking me questions about the civil rights movement. And my son, trying to be comical and facetious, said to me about Rosa Parks. He said, Daddy, what else did she do? And I said, son, I believe you being joking, but I need you to correct that. Yes. I said, because Mother Parks, by sitting on that, tri- on that bus and refusing to get up, did more than she could ever do for us. I said, son, you don't understand because you living in this day and age, but in Alabama, if you went to jail in Alabama, there was no guarantee that you was coming out. I said, in Alabama in the 60s, they would take you into jail and then later on when your family come to see about you, they'll say we released you at 3 a.m. and nobody will ever hear or see you again. I said, when she refused to get up from that bus, she put in motion something that will change this world for us forever. And my son said, well, daddy, she really wasn't the first. I said, whether she was the first or the second, she was the catalyst for a change. Ebenezer, I came to tell you today that in a little manger outside of the city limits by the name of Bethlehem, is attributed to being the city of David. There was something that happened in a dirty place that cleaned up this whole entire world. See, it's amazing that the writer Luke, who was a doctor, took time to give us geographical situationing of the purpose of this birth. He made sure to let us know that not only was it geographically Bethlehem, the house of bread, the worship site for all Jews, but he made careful note to give us the genealogy of the city by calling it the city of David. Letting us know that Jews know David and they know anything that goes down in the name of David is sanctioned by God. Church, I came to ask you today, how many people have come to you in the name of God but ain't doing what God commanded them to do? How many of y'all know people that can say the name Jesus but can't live up to the mandates that are called to it? This writer was letting us know that even before Jesus came on the scene, even before he was birthed out of Mary, even before he was called Emmanuel, he was born in the right place and he was tied to the right family and the city and the family were all tied back to God. 
I hear people all the time touting their universe, their universities, their colleges, and their last name. But can I tell you something that I learned a long time ago? That if it ain't about God, it all ain't right. about really nothing. Yeah, yeah. That if it can't be linked back to the one and true God, it really ain't worth mentioning or bragging about. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, it don't matter if your last name is Smith, Johnson, or Hendricks. If you can't say that you are a child of God, there's really no point in pushing the name. Years ago, I was in Memphis, Tennessee, and this brother got drunk on the train, the bus, I forget, they got trolleys down there, and, and he got drunk, and the trolley driver had enough of them, and she said, I'm going to put you off this trolley, and the drunk brother said, you can't put me off of nothing, and she stopped the trolley, we was all there captive, because he was cutting up, and she said, I'm going to go get Memphis PD, and they're going to put you off the bus, and before she could get off the bus, the drunk brother stood up and said something deep that changed my whole perspective for this trip. He said, ma'am, if you ain't going to get Jesus, you ain't going to get nobody, and I realized right there, even the drunk brother knew that can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody change my mind, if I'm going to cut up on this bus, just because a bad step on it ain't going to stop me, but if God come into this situation, I'll turn around, if God step on this bus, everything that I'm telling you, I will recant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, it's something about when the presence of God shows up. Yes, sir. That everything that you thought was left can turn right. Mm -hmm. It's something about when the presence of God shows up in our life. Things that seem like they were down can be up. Mm -hmm. It's something about when the presence of God come in our life that depression can turn to giggles. It's something about in the presence of God that sickness can turn to healing. Yeah. It's something about in the presence of God that they even can turn a prison into a praise worship. Yeah. Yeah. It's something about the presence of God that even a dirty manger can become an intensive care unit and birth the greatest person that had ever been birthed before. It's something about a swaddling clothes. Yeah. You know, Amen. can I give you a little histology of the text? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. See, I remember when we had our children showing them. You were so drugged up, you may not remember this. I thank God I'm the man in the marriage, and I didn't have to go through what her body went through. Y'all right. wow. men might as well say amen with me, because yeah. if you've ever seen your wife give birth, you realize that ain't man's work. All right. Amen. We're going to leave that to y'all sisters. God bless y'all for doing it for us. Amen. But I remember she was laying there, and here I am, nervous and shaking because of what I done seen. And they bought my daughter in all cleaned up. Cause that wasn't the first time I saw her. Mm -hmm. The first time I saw her, I ain't even know what it was. Yes. It was covered in some Scooby Doo goo. Right. I ain't know what it was. And all right. next time I saw her, she was all cleaned up and wrapped in a nice little blanket. And they handed her to me, and, and she was swaddled. What I learned later that was the text. She was swaddled, and she was quiet with a binky in her mouth. And, she was just laying there. She wasn't screaming like when I was first introduced to her. And I, I thought about that in this text. Then when we hear that Jesus didn't gamble was wrapped in swaddling clothes, mm -hmm. some of us think of a nice little blanket like we got our babies with it. Mm -hmm. wow. Jesus was wrapped up in a dirty manger rag. Yes. Uh -huh. Something that they dried the animals off with. Wow. Something that wasn't sanitary nor clean. Yeah. But they wrapped Jesus up in it and handed him well, didn't they, the daddy? Mm -hmm. Joseph wrapped her up and wrapped him up and handed him to his mama. And I, yes. and I realize this right now. That while we out here buying all these gifts for Christmas, mm -hmm. while we getting all this beautiful tinsel and beautiful gold-wrapped papers with Santa Claus ho 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 and all over it, and while we're doing all this, the greatest gift ever given to men all right. was wrapped in a dirty rag. Yes, yes. The greatest gift ever given to man was wrapped in something that stunk and smelled like the situation. Yes. Why am I saying this? I need to tell you this, Ebenezer. That I need you to realize that no matter what the situation you're in, yes. no matter how it comes gifted to you, no matter how it comes presented to you, if Jesus is in it, yes. if, can I say it again? If yes. Jesus is inside of it, yes. everything yes. is just the way it should be. Amen. Yes. Oh my, can I tell you right now, if Jesus is wrapped up in an argument, the argument's going to have to cease. Yes. Yes. 
If Jesus is wrapped up in a medical condition, the medical condition is going to have to cease. If Jesus is wrapped up in your supervisor's job, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So it says that the angel appeared to these shepherds outside the city limits. I don't know what small town is outside of Manning, but is there some farmland around here? Can you imagine that town? where somebody may be out there picking beans or corn. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, an angel pops up. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, y'all might be more saved than I am. All right. But if I'm by myself, then all of a sudden a cloud of smoke show up and somebody inside the cloud of smoke. Don't tell me not to be scared. Don't tell me not to have no fear. Because I'm not going to be scared. I'm going to be scarred. All right. But the angel was saying, don't run away, because that's what was about to happen. He said, don't run away because I've come to bring you good news. Yes, yes. That's what tidings mean. Yes. Why would he appear outside the city to shepherds? Good news. Mm -hmm. Church, how many of y'all got grandmamas and granddaddies that pick cotton? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all got grandmamas or grandfathers that laid brick for a living? How many of y'all had grandfathers or grandmothers that worked in hot and heavy work intensive factories? Yes. Wouldn't it be amazing if God showed up while they was doing that back breaking work and say, don't worry about the work you're doing right now. I've got good news that everything you're doing yes, yes. is going to pay off in the end. Yes, yes. That's why he showed up to the shepherds. He said, look, you're doing the hard labor to make sure that everything in town got food. Everybody in town got warm clothes. Everything you do out here in these county lines is making sure that everybody else is taken care of. But God wants you to know, Ebenezer, yes. he takes care of you too. Yes. I need you to know right now that there's some good news out there, church. Yes, Seems like every time I cut my news on, I see about another war. Yes. Seem like every time I cut my news on, I hear about another murder. Yes. Seem like every time I cut the news on, I hear about another robbery or another bad thing. Yes. But I'm glad that I get my news from a different wire. Yes. I'm glad that when I need some good news, I, I don't open up a newspaper. I open up God's good book. I'm glad when I need to hear some good news, I, I can turn to the second chapter of Luke right around verse 10 and say, behold, I've got some good news. That ain't just for some people, but it's for all people. I heard a preacher preaching and the word he preached bothered my soul. He said, that Jesus wasn't born for everybody. He was born for the many, but not all. Yeah. I had to differ with the preacher. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that keeps you from being part of the many is that you got to accept him. Yeah. You got to receive him. Mm -hmm. He was born for everybody, yeah. but not everybody will receive him. Yeah. Why did I think about that? Because... William, my brother came in. God bless you. I'm glad you made it safe. <laughs> but I had ordered something from J.C. Penny, mm -hmm. And it came in. But I forgot about it, Deacon Gamble. And the gift said, it said in the email, you got seven days to pick it up. Yes. Lo and behold, I called on the eighth day. And they said, Mr. Moore, we sent your gift back. <laughs> And the Lord spoke to me in the voice of my father. Yes. I remember one time my daddy tightened me up because he told me to do something, but I didn't do it when he told me, and I forgot about it. Yes. And when he smacked me in the back of the head, he said, if you would have done it when I told you, you never would have forgot. And I remember that I didn't pick up my gift because I didn't go when I was told. 
And I came to tell you today that that preacher that didn't tell the church everything, that the only reason some people don't have Jesus is not because he's not available, but it's because they didn't go and get their gift. That their gift was right there in front of them. But all they had to do was receive it. All they had to do is say, Jesus, I make you my savior. I make you my Lord. I make you my all in all. And your gift will make room for you. He said, this good news is for everybody. He said, there fall unto us this day in the city of David is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Which means that not only is he man, but he's the anointed. See, church, if you're going to do something for God, even Jesus had to be anointed. If you're not anointed for the job, you will fail at the task. Can I say this again? If you're not anointed for the job. You will fail at the task. There's a difference between the job and the task. See, the job is what we do every day. But many little tasks help us get the job done. How can I say that? You know, you you work at the job, but your task is to get yourself out the car and walk in the building. Oh, you you work at the job, but your task is to get to your desk and log on to your computer. Oh, you work at the job, but once you log on the computer, you got to be tempted not to pick up your phone and fa- go on Facebook instead of doing the job. Yeah. Wow. Many people know the job, but don't want to do the little steps to get, to get it done. Right. Uh-huh. Come on now. Baked the cake a couple of days ago. And in the middle of baking the cake, realized I did not have the cream. <laughs> but my ignorant self still baked it. That cake was hard enough to build a good dog house on. It was only fit for a foundation. Church, if we don't do everything God says do, it ain't going to turn out right. If we don't do the task that God calls us to do, we're going to leave the job undone. But it says that after we, he was born in the city of David and he was Savior, he was already called. He didn't have to become the Savior. Mm-hmm. Said that in his birth, he was already Christ yeah. the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. See, the world's been telling a story that we had to wait till Jesus was 30 to become the Christ and, and to perform miracles and do all these things. But can I tell you, at the first time he drew earthly breath, he was already anointed and he was already Lord. That meant that every promise that God wrote from Genesis to Malachi had to come true just because the Savior had entered the world. Church, I came to tell you right now that once Jesus entered your life, every promise that God made you has to come true. Once Jesus entered your life, every trouble that tried to tear you down has got to let you loose. Once you accepted your gift in Jesus, everything is commanded to be all right. He was wrapped in dirty clothes in a manger. In a place where animals and livestock were kept. Mm -hmm. In a place where things didn't smell too good. I ain't never been in a manger, but I've been in a barn. And a barn didn't smell good at all. But there was Jesus. Because I want you to know right now that your situation is not your obligation. Can I tell you that again? That just because you're situated in it don't mean you're obligated to stay in it. Can I tell somebody else this today? That just because it's your right now don't mean it's your forever. Can I tell you right now, it may start out dirty, but it's going to end up right as God has commanded it to be. He started in a dirty manger, smelly, wrapped up in horrible clothes, but he ended up being Christ of the world. The Bible says that once this angel that scared the shepherds, Uh once he announced that he was Jesus, the Christ, the Lord, Mm -hmm. and that he was wrapped in swaddling clothes, Mm -hmm. and that he was lying in a manger, couldn't even walk yet. said once he told them who he was and where he was, Mm -hmm. the Bible says, and then suddenly... There was with him an ang- with the angel 
a multitude of heavenly hosts. Yes. Church, when Jesus entered this world, the who's who of heaven left heaven, yes. had to come down to earth yes, and see what the commotion was all about. Yes. They heard that peace had entered the world. They heard that joy had entered the world. Yes. They heard that love had entered the world. Yes. And the who's who of heaven, the heavenly hosts, that mean the armies of heavenly angels, those that were commanded to battle for the good, for the kingdom of God, those that were in charge of keeping peace in order in heaven, the very ones that drove Satan and his enemies out of heaven. When they heard that Jesus was on earth, the Bible says that they left heaven and appeared with the one angel. Can I tell you right now, didn't your Bible say that if one is Lost. He'll leave the 99 to find the one. When the one angel was with Jesus, the other angel said, where Christ is, that's where we need to be. They came down from heaven and they joined with the one angel. And the Bible tells us that when they got around Jesus, something happened in their body. Something happened in their spirit that once they got in the presence of God, even though they were in a dirty manger, even though they were in a nasty place, that praise erupted that they got the shouting and praising God one of them got to saying glory to God in the highest hey somebody got to praising him and said that one of them said there will be peace on earth and goodwill toward me see church something happened because the angels who had never known sin had they did one sin they've been thrusted out of heaven had they thought one impure thought, they would have been thrusted out of heaven. They knew what peace and joy was already about. But when they found out that what they already knew for eternity had landed on earth, they had to come down and praise God. Church, we know some haters, don't we? Amen. Yes, sir. That if you get a brand new car, they're like, it ain't all that. All right. You know some haters out there. Yes, yes. That when they get your wedding invitation in the mail, they suck their teeth because they ain't married. We know some haters out there. Yes, man. That when you post the pictures of your Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, they say that chicken look dry. <laughs> we know some haters out there. Yes, sir. But can I tell you, being a hater ain't godly. All right. Because the angels would never know our praise. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll never know our story. Yes. Because they never have known flesh nor sin. Yes. But the Bible says that when they found out that Jesus was on earth, yes. they left a perfect place to come down to be with Jesus. Yes. And that's why I tell you, just because it's your situation don't mean it's your obligation. Right. Because wherever Jesus is, yes. there's some glory to God going down. Yes. Yes. Sin. Come on. Says that when the angels realized that he was born, not that he had healed the sick, not that he had restored the blind sight, mm -hmm. not that he had brought the dead back to life. Mm -hmm. He hadn't done any of those things. Just the promise of God being brought into this world mm -hmm. was enough for them to leave heaven mm -hmm. and praise Jesus. Yes. In the cornfields, mm -hmm. amongst the livestock. Mm -hmm. They left heaven because they realized that he had already done enough. Yes, yes. Church, I want you to know this right now. He's already done more than enough in yes, our yes, lives. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, church. The first time we realized that he was Christ, yes. the Lord, mm -hmm. he had done enough for us. Yes. The first time he showed us that there was a better way than the way we were going. Yes. He had already done more than enough. Yes. The first time he opened up our eyes and we saw ourselves for who we truly were, not the sinful template, but the children of God. Yes. He had already done more than enough. Yes. When he decided to take the mantle of flesh and come to earth, yes. he had already done more than enough. Yes. 
So when my son asked what, did, what else did Rosa Parks do, she did enough to change the civil rights and segregation movement in this country. Amen. But if he was to ask me what else did Jesus do, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell him long enough all the things that Jesus did. Yes, sir. yes, yes. But knowing that he was born in the city of David, wow. in a dirty stink manger, wrapped up in creepy dirty clothes, yes. he had already done enough in that one moment yes. that would bless our lives and this world forever. Yes. 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 And church, as I take my clothes, I came to remind you, that, like I said, that the angels don't know my praise. All right. And the angels don't know my story. Yes. But I'm like Paul. When I'm in the company of sinners, yes. I count myself the chiefest among sinners. Yes. Yes. See, because I may not know what they have done, but I know what God has forgiven me for. Yes. So when the angels came down from heaven, and began to praise God for what he's always done for them. We have a new praise. I can praise God for what he's doing for me in the right now. See, because I know that he saved my soul. I was on my way to hell, but the angels didn't know that hell was a place for them because they had always known heaven. But when he changed my life and he turned my direction, when he let me realize that my destination was not my end point, but the beginning was the beginning of the end of sin in my life. When he came down and blessed me with his birth, I realized I can't let angels beat my praise because he brought me too far. I can't let angels beat my praise because he saved me from too much. I can't let angels outdo my worship. Because Jesus has already done more than enough. I'm going to leave you with this. When I was a little boy, I used to hang around my grandmother a lot. And she used to cook. And I was learning from my mother and grandmother how to cook. Because first lady, you don't get this big without participating. You got to know how to feed yourself if you want to get this size. Amen. And she used to throw nuggets out. And I didn't understand them as a child, but she told me something that I'll never forget. She said, baby, even when I'm dead and gone, you'll hear my voice. And these things will make sense to you. Yes. And she told me two things that shook my world. First thing she told me, she said, baby, she said, you can, if you had 10,000 tongues, mm. you'll never be able to thank God enough Amen. Wow. Amen. for what he did for you today. Yes, yes. Just this day. Yes. Yes. And another thing she told me, Deacon Gamble, and I'm praying that I meet the mantle. She said, baby, you will never know how merciful God is All right. mm -hmm. until you stand in front of him for yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Because he's going to have to forgive a whole lot to let you through those gates. And I realized this. And as I was, this text was coming into my spirit, I was but five, six, maybe seven years old. And he had already done enough in my life that a five-year-old or a seven-year-old could grasp salvation and stand here as a man 29 plus one and tell you that God is able. And that your praise is mandatory uh -huh. because he's already done more than enough. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you stand to your feet.